Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Best Darn Everything, where we take a break from talking about The Simpsons to nerd out about all sorts of other stuff and sometimes defend our terrible takes when it comes to media taste. And that's what we're here to do today, because the WizKid and I have a list of movies that we claim to love, or at least appreciate, and uh, are either cr- like critically panned or just obviously bad. Social uh, pariahs. <laughs> so we're excited to bring that to you today. And when I say we, of course, joining me as always, your co-host with the most, Richie the WizKid. How you doing today, Rich? Man, I'm a little nervous because I just want <laughs> I want all the listeners out there to know that like before we were even recording, Miles was already texting me last night while I'm at work, knowing I can't respond, being like, we've got to do this, 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 this. My list is so long at this point. And then even while we're waiting to record, he's still writing down more movies. So like I'm I'm kind of terrified to see the route that this one's gonna take. <laughs> I guess that's kind of the point. Uh we we also need to probably talk about like if each individual movie was hated enough to be considered on this list, I would think, because, you know, in the moment when you're writing all this stuff down, it may be like, yeah, this one, I'm going to write it down. But then when we talk about it, it'd be like, dude, that one got like a certified fresh score. Why are you putting that on this list? Which I doubt honestly, I, yeah, that's but... actually a good idea, though. We should get uh, Rotten Tomatoes up and just kind of confirm what what everything does as we go along and and we probably will need to discuss like do these movies even qualify to be on this podcast you know miles i might have to admit something here i don't know if i've ever navigated the rotten tomatoes website before really i mean all the previews tell you what the the score is on these movies so oh you know i guess to be fair yeah okay then yeah actually same i usually just type in the movie i'm interested in and it'll pop up with the the rating this is the this will be oh, a this first is what looks us. like yeah yeah, yeah. They have How a whole interface, a website and everything. <laughs> Weird. Crazy. Anyway, I didn't mean to cut uh, you off. Well, yeah, because I, I guess I need to throw it back to you. I don't really, <laughs> I mean, the man, the myth, the movie guy, he is Miles. I don't even know for this one. I, I don't know. That, what that works. Uh, okay. way, way to go off the cuff. Glad, yeah, glad we went there. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be a fun episode. Uh, I think I've loosely labeled it until we come up with something better or don't. Uh, this is Bad Movies We Love. Uh, and I ended up trying to be like not writing down everything because, again, of, of oh. the factors we talked about. I just so happened, though, Richie, to end up with 23 movies on my list. Mm-hmm. So I think that shows like some weird uh, connection or tethering that we have for each other. And again, if you end up with 17 movies <gasps> on your list, I'm going to like lose my no. shit. I've got 14. Illuminati right confirmed. <laughs> I've got 14 on my list right now. But there were about three movies that I was like, no, nah, I can't put that one on. <laughs> So while I was making my list, I, I noticed a couple of things that I, I thought was interesting. So um, first of all, the majority of the movies that I have on my list fell into one of three categories. Horror. Horror was definitely one of them. Yeah, a bunch <laughs> of horror. That's true. Uh, and honestly, I stopped listing a lot of them just because I'm like, this movie isn't even well known enough to be critically panned. Like, <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, like yeah. only the nerds with a shutter account that like go into like the deep dive section are like the only people that would watch this shit. Uh, my second category though, I guess this one's also not like su- super unusual. Super is a funny word though. Cause it's comic book movies or superhero movies, okay. man. I am very forgiving of a bad superhero story. You put somebody in some like situation with a costume and some magic powers and I am down for 90 minutes of whatever it is. So I've got a, quite enough. a few of those. Um, and then the last one I thought was really funny because I have an unusual amount of part threes on my list. Like there are so many movies in a franchise oh, and it's specifically the third one for whatever reason, which for like what? one of my favorite horror movies of all time is nightmare on Elm street part three. So like, I don't know, man, there's something with that Trinity, uh, I guess. Wait, it was part three dream warriors. Uh, it was uh, yeah. Dream warriors. See, I thought part two was regarded as a more, terrible movie than part three part two is considered to be the worst in the franchise though i actually uh put part five uh, a spoiler alert is on my actual list today that we'll talk about see and that's the kind of stuff i'm sorry part six part six (laughs) okay okay regardless of that i i don't know i mean i guess this is all subjective to how you feel about it i don't know if i'd consider any of the nightmare on elm street movies bad enough to be considered on this list but i guess that's what we're here to talk about so why don't you go ahead and get us started with uh 
I guess we could save the nightmare stuff for after we've put some boundaries in on this, but let's start with like a easier one. Okay. I actually going. came up with one that I think that is going to be a good starting point for us because okay. it's a movie that I know that you and I both love. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's considered to be a really stupid fucking movie. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to get rotten tomatoes to confirm, <gasps> but basketball, Basketball is an amazing movie. Yes, I'm pretty sure it's a beloved film. I don't think that <laughs> okay. would ever qualify. No, I was going to go with the Kevin James vehicle, Here Comes the Boom, where oh, Kevin James becomes an okay. MMA fighter and he's like a, a teacher that you know decides he wants to go the path of the MMA fighter. First of all, does that movie count for this list? And am no. I correct that you love that movie? I, I do love that movie. That movie is I, I wouldn't even consider that a guilty pleasure movie. It's one, if it comes on on TV and you happen to have the TV on, which nobody does anymore, nobody uses broadcast television anymore, um, you just have to end up watching it no matter what part of the movie it's in. But I feel like enough people went and saw it because it's probably his highest grossing movie ever. <laughs> and I feel like enough people liked it to where you can't really consider it in that regard. So what are we going to consider the fresh rating to be where it's a success? Because I, I just looked this one up. Don't look it up yet because I'm going to have you guess. And I, I think it'd be fun to alternate on that. So I'll let you look up the next one. But um, what, where do we, where are we going to call the line for a tomato fresh rating that it's like, no, that movie's trash and we're idiots versus uh, yeah. I, I mean, should we just put it right in the middle and say anything below 50 or above 50? One okay, yeah, the 50-50 line. I think that's a fair one. Uh, and in that case, uh, I love this movie. You love this movie. The rest of the world does not love this movie because this movie <laughs> is rated 41% fresh. Ooh, I was going to guess 56. Not terrible. Not terrible. But yeah, no, this movie Maybe we need is to move bad. It to the 40s. Um, this this movie is considered to be pretty bad. I guess IMDb would be another interesting place just to just to look, but I, I think we'll keep it with fresh uh, Rotten Tomatoes because that'll that'll right. make it more streamlined. Uh, but yeah, so too. here comes the boom, a movie that I agree with you to uh, anywhere. If that movie comes on in the last act, I'm down. If it comes yeah. on at the beginning, I'm down. If I'm halfway through it, I'm down. It doesn't matter. I will watch Kevin James take a beating for 60 minutes only to become triumphant Rocky style. Spoiler alert. We'll talk about one of those two in a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter that Joe Rogan flies his entire school to come watch him fight when they lost all this money and Joe Rogan <laughs> just could have given the school the money back. Doesn't that make any sense, but that's okay. That one did not fall into any of my uh, my three categories of horror comic book or part threes, <laughs> but I thought it would be a good grounded place to start because I knew that we both did love that movie. All right. Um, can I fire with one of mine right now? Yeah. And then you're going to you look it up on Rotten Tomatoes and let me take a stab at what its rating is. All right. But what, what's the movie? So a movie that myself and my father at the time, we both actually enjoyed the movie and thought it was exactly what it was promised to be and that was john carter john carter okay that was the one where he's like fighting in the arenas against like mega beast and shit like that loosely based on a marvel project i think uh, it was based on a book series a okay john carter book series so I, I, I actually did not see this one so that, this one's gonna be tough for me but i do remember it coming out i do remember seeing previews for it uh, I that's just never really my style of movie, truthfully, to begin with. Uh, so it didn't really appeal to me personally. But I, I think do... it was a Disney property, too, if I remember when that when this movie came out. I could be wrong. And that, that was before Disney had bought up all the uh, like big Marvel heroes, I think. So that yeah. was uh, that was one of the things, too. But uh, I do remember this one just getting critically panned. So I'm going to say that this one, if you you so you do love this movie. I think it's very enjoyable. Like, I think it's exactly what they promised it would be. So I can't give it a, a personal opinion on this one, but I'm going to guess that it has a 29% tomato rating. All right. So you know how critically panned this movie was. Like, people yeah. shat on this movie. So this scale that we're using isn't going to work because the Rotten Tomato score for this movie is actually 52%. Oh, and I'd never wild. Would have, I would have guessed like 30s if I would if we were the other way. I, I said 27. So we were right in that same, so that I, same area. I, I don't know. This is like everything. Every time we open our mouths, we, we put our foot inside our mouth in this. podcast. This is just so going to be we could just title this one. We eat our feet and that would totally, <laughs> totally be we'll fine. probably get a lot more views. Too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good time to be on video. <laughs> All right, um, let's move on. P tell me which category you want. You want a horror, a comic book, or a part three? Let's uh, let's go comic book. Let's go. Comic so, and some of those will cross over for what it's worth. 
Uh, okay, first comic book movie I'm going to put up here. Uh, I'm going to say that I actually enjoy the like 2004 version of Daredevil. Ben Affleck. Um, no, we're done. This podcast. Jennifer Garner. Uh, I'm not oh trying gosh. to claim that this is a oh fantastic adaptation of Daredevil. I'm trying to say that there are parts of this movie that I really like. And in 2004, you loved Evanescence. Don't act like you did it. People like to shit on it because like oh, Daredevil, basically the soundtrack is just an Evan Evanescence album. Yeah, but Evanescence was cool for like a year and a half or a while. And yeah, they were, but this movie was not. So that's okay. <laughs> uh, the two things can both be Kingpin, true. dude. Tell me that was not a great rendition of Kingpin. God. Everything about nothing... this movie was terrible. Colin Farrell as Bullseye and no. the most uncaring Colin Farrell performance ever. He read this script and was like, this is dog shit. I'm going to have fun with this shit right here. Watch me kill this man with a, with a paperclip, everybody. Watch, watch. Believe it. Believe it. That's how good of an actor I am. I just made you believe it. I fell asleep watching this movie after it had been out for like eight years. <laughs> Again, oh, you what's, give, what's you the give Rotten me, Tomatoes? Going? I'm, I'm looking, see, it right um, looking it up right now. I'm looking up right now. You give me, and it was 2003, not four. My bad. <clears throat> you give me a uh, a celebrity in a weird suit and some sort of abilities, and I am down for this fucking fight. Like, like you know like, what would have helped cool. this movie? Nipples More on Electra? the Daredevil suit. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you brought that up because it's also <laughs> on my list. <laughs> Maybe we should jump right into that one next. <laughs> All right, Rich, what is what is the rotten tomato? Everybody's going to agree with you on this one. I, I have trash taste. What is uh, your rotten tomato? 39%. Oh, you're so close, dude. That was really good. 35%. Really? 35%. 35 ooh, ooh, okay. Certified you pull, not fresh. Go ahead and pull up Batman and Robin, too. Okay, so I, I put both Batman Forever and Batman and Robin collectively on this list. Whoa, Batman whoa, Forever whoa. is Batman fantastic. Forever was good. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, that's the first one they did bat nipples. That's the one where they really started to uh, like, you know, make fun. That that was Schumacher's takeover from from Burton. And it was noticeable, we'll say. Uh, but yeah, Batman and Robin. 42. Those, those movies. Uh, well, what? first of all, go ahead. Let's do Batman Forever for reference. Batman Forever has a 38% Rotten oh, Tomato shit. rating. So I'm that telling changes you, my, that changes people, my score. people don't like that movie. So what, is, what do you got for Batman and Robin? <laughs> then I'm going to go down to a 28. Rome, uh, this one gave me both the tom tomato meter and the audience score. Tomato meter is 12%. Audience Ooh. score is 16%. Holy crap. Uh, this movie is hated but i this is another one that is corny as it is dude actually from like your dad joking like i feel like how how could you not love this movie for arnold alone i mean uh, it's, this movie it's about delivery ice, bro it's about delivery miles you know what happened when batman got on the elevator uh what happened richie the dark knight rises but uh... either way like, it's it's all about delivery and we all know Arnold Schwarzenegger is going to be in that new movie coming out where he's going to be playing a, a, a music, a famous music composer. He'll be Bach. You know, it's, it's going to be happening soon, man. So it's all good. <laughs> the look on my face right now. <laughs> oh, man. Should, uh, uh, I, uh, that's that's pretty much wraps up my my uh superhero ones, actually. I just realized I, the other ones kind of tie into it, but that that's good. That that that's we, we can leave that one behind yeah i'm starting to realize though like i don't i know this is not what this podcast is about but i don't know how i it's feel about, about self-discovery richie so it's about whatever the fuck we want it to be yeah. i don't know how i feel about people going back and reviewing movies that have been out for a while like if you know i guess well we're technically millennials too and i'm gonna sound like an old angry man but like going back and reviewing all movies that have been out for 20 years or so and be like, oh, well, this is garbage. And then you're just giving it a super low score. I know that's what the internet's for. That's the only purpose of the internet besides porn. But like, I, I, it just doesn't feel right. Like, it feels like, you know, how people will get on IMDb and, and bomb a movie before it ever comes out when they haven't even seen the movie. Sure. It kind of feels like what some of this stuff is, is doing. It's a, I, it's a product of its time, like, which is true of almost all media. Like, if, exactly. you, were, if you weren't alive uh, and... Uh, if you weren't in the moment when those movies were released, you're going to struggle to understand some of like the commentary of a film or like just where the world was at in a lot of places. Um, 
<laughs> it jumps into another one of my movies that I just uh, spent a good amount of time podcasting about recently. I love the movie Scream 3, which is a pretty despised movie if you look at the ratings really? for that. I ha- yeah, everybody hates Scream 3, dude. It's the worst one by far. <laughs> um in the in the franchise but there's like some really good reasons for that and like going back to your point of like living in the moment scream 3 came out in the year 2000 i got one more in um (laughs) uh so i've actually been uh joining the camp slash horror cast it's live on twitch every monday at camp slash horror cast uh we review horror movies and we just covered scream this past week uh so i I talked a lot about this already but scream 3 came out uh in the year 2000 right after columbine happened in 1999 and the original plot to scream 3 was very different than the scream 3 we got so that one featured uh Stu, the second killer from the first movie coming mm-hmm. back, which has been something that has been, you know, talked about a lot recently. Um, but it also featured a very violent climax that took place in the school, in the Westboro school. And then Columbine happened and they were like, hmm, that's not really a great look right now. So they had to completely change that movie in its entirety. But the first act of that movie is fantastic. It has a great opening call scene, which is always fun. Uh, it does the thing where they parody the set, like the making of Stab, like, the the whole thing like happens on a film set that's so super meta uh there's a lot to love about that and it does admittedly fall apart in the third act but i still love that movie and uh for to your point that one gets the tomato meter of 41 percent and the audience score of 37 percent i just man I, i remember people saying that it wasn't good when it came out but i don't remember it being like so hated where it was like this doesn't work and well for context the the second one had an 81 percent uh tomato meter and a 57 percent audience score so like it's a huge decline Mm -hmm. uh in the popularity of that film but again i I love that movie and it has jay and silent bob in it come on there you go but if only 10 people review it then i don't i don't know if it's like nationally considered that bad of a movie, but it's also horror. So that's also where I'm like, well, this one has 250,000 ratings on it. Yeah, so no, it's a pretty conclusive. No way at home had that many reviews <laughs> probably after the first day. That's true. Um, Dude, uh, that one actually, I remember though, that that one was one of the first movies on my list for this one, because I remember distinctly you and I together in Denton at a video store that was shutting down and we were there buying clearance movies. And like this was at the point that they were selling the shelves. Like this place was going yeah. out of business. Uh, and I bought scream three that night. Uh, and the, the like person at the video store made fun of me for buying that movie. They're like, you're buying that trash. It's not even worth the dollar we're selling it for. And I'm like, really? Like I thought the whole point of this was for you to sell off your shit, dude. We're Troy and and you're talking to the waiter. (laughs) Die Hard's not a good movie, man. (laughs) All right. Let's, uh, we got to get onto another movie. We talked a lot about scream already. Let's, uh, let's get one of yours going. I'm ready to guess it's tomato rating. So I want to I want to stay with the Taylor Kitsch movies because, you know, he went through a bad phase when John Carter came out. So movie is that, that the director came... of John Carter, Taylor Kitsch? No, the, the main actor. Oh, OK. Don't, don't recognize him. I'll be honest. Well, you probably just don't remember the name and he hasn't really been anything noticeable lately. Another movie that came out after John Carter, Battleship. Oh, dude. And that had Rihanna in it. Yeah. Battleship critically panned. This movie's been made fun of so much. But when I worked at Blockbuster, people didn't want to rent it at first because they were just like, oh, man, this has been panned on so bad. Everybody hates this movie. But every single person that rented that movie would bring it back and be like, oh, man, I absolutely love this movie. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's based on a freaking board game. So you can't expect a lot out of it. But like it's that was when all the memes came out that there are going to be all these like uh, movies based on board games. Yeah. Like, you know, we're going to. Yeah, we're going to get the Twister board game, which I think is actually happening. But oh, my gosh. (laughs) But the the movie's fun, man. It's absolutely fun. It's ridiculously over the top. Like aliens coming to destroy its plot. What's not to love about it, man? 
that definitely qualifies as a movie that I, I would agree with you. It's very enjoyable. Uh, I, if, I, I haven't seen that one in years at this point, and I've watched it's it. Got Liam on, Neeson, man. Come I on. watched it based on your recommendation because I too was like, oh, that's going to be so bad. But it's one of those where, like, if you don't let your brain work too hard and you just like eat yeah. some popcorn and chill the fuck out, you'll have a good time. It's also got Miles, if you remember, Turtle, isn't it? Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> it's Jerry like first, Ferrara. Is that it was name? like yeah, I think it was his first role after Entourage. I think, or well, Entourage was finished. <laughs> so glad that that took off for him. Yeah, uh, he was in. You know, he was in a movie though with Shia LaBeouf that I actually remember. I think it was called Eagle Eye. Uh, that that probably could probably qualify for this list. I almost wrote that one down for this, but I was like, no, that one. I, I think that I, one got decently reviewed. Yeah, and I remember he was in it at the beginning of that too. <laughs> uh, all right, let me take a stab at the uh, Rotten Tomatoes score. I feel like that's going to be one where the the like tomato meter is going to be way higher than the or, or the audience score is going to be higher than the tomato meter the audience maybe. score is higher than the tomato meter um <laughs> let me say that the audience score on that one is going to be 55 and the tomato meter is 40 so the audience score was 54 oh i almost nailed that one dude the tomato meter was 34 oh, okay that's a little more off that's actually pretty good that's collectively seven points off that's not bad <laughs> That's pretty, but that's yeah, pretty the decent. 34, that, that's that's pretty low for a movie. Um, so you can see that. There is, let's see, you did a couple in a row. Yeah, go, go for There's another one. one I want sure. One I want to save for the end, kind of. But I do want to bring this one up because this one's always a hot button issue to talk about. The movie Lucy with Scarlett Johansson. Okay, I remember it's, seeing that one and I, I I didn't really care for it, but it was fine. I, I, I want to say that like it's not a movie I necessarily love, but I absolutely love the ending. And that's the part that everybody hated. Like I really, really enjoyed all the trippy stuff then where she just starts going so fast that like she blips out of existence, but is everywhere all at the same time. Like I loved that part. Yeah, I do remember thinking that got really dumb. But not that I'm not, I, I'm all about more Scarlett Johansson in this world, but like this one, the tomato meter is higher than the audience score. Oh, interesting. So the audience is who shot on this one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not with you on this one that I can defend that as a good movie. It's, it, I mean, like again, uh, attractive female lead. That's it, a great actress in a really weird plot with a, some decent action, but not a collectively good film by any means. Um, man, I'm going to say on that one, the tomato score is probably like 51. Uh, audience, 39. Uh, tomato score, 67. Okay. And then audience score, 47. Okay, so it was better. It got better reviews than I, I thought it would have. That's, yeah, that's honestly, that shocked yeah. me a little bit too. Yeah, but, for sure. Do you want to do another one or do you want well, to keep I, If going? you have another one that kind of connects to that one, go for it. Because I don't have anything that perfectly connects there. But I, if you want me to go, I will. No, um, I could connect it in the sense that, you know, Scarlett Johansson was in a movie that they talked about being dumb because she was a white actress playing a Asian role. Uh, um, I never saw Aeon Flux. I never saw that one. Not, but not I, Aeon I, Flux. Now you made me forget the name of uh, I thought that was I thought that was it. Aeon Flux was Charlize Theron. You're right. Uh, but I was going to tie that while I sit here and try to think about what the what the movie's called um, into another actor taking a role that people said a white actor shouldn't have. And I think it's actually a delightful movie. And that would be Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. Oh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Okay. Yeah, I think um, that movie's fun, man. Like Another one I, I didn't see, dude. Another one I didn't see. Like it's a good story. Like I care about the characters. I understand why people are angry. But at was the that film. movie hated because it was a bad movie, or because of the backlash of him playing a, a character of a different race? Well, I can tell you right now, man. I'm gonna go ahead. You're not gonna be able to guess this tomato score. Um, I don't know how this website works. There's an audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, but there is no tomato meter score. How oh, weird. What's the audience score on this one? A 58. But I remember this. See, movie I was, was going like, to say, I don't think this movie attacked. was like, hated. It, that, that was probably what you were talking about earlier. I can't remember. Uh, now I don't know if we actually talked about it on the air or not, but I think we did. Uh, of like a review, a review bombing of a movie without any context. And I don't think that yeah. counts. So frankly, I, I'm omitting that one from the list. That one does not count. I remember that like, critics were shatting on that movie back when it came out. Um, and the movie we were talking about with Scarlett Johansson was Ghost in the Shell. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that one either. 
which see those don't those don't typically uh those types of like anything based on an anime for the most part isn't gonna c- c- connect to me again i'm not like instantly turning it off in fact one of the movies i have on my list i'll go ahead and do now is speed racer uh on an old school anime nice. basis that movie again now, now you might disqualify this one uh but i remember that movie got really really hated on uh, I it saw did. it in theaters and I enjoyed it. And then I saw it on drugs and I fell in love with it. <laughs> uh, and that's very real. Uh, Speed Racer came out. It's like the movie that came out after. Um, the Girl Next Door. I was going to say after The Matrix because it was a Wachowski. Oh. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm struggling to remember their their current uh, preferred name. But the Wachowski. Lana. Uh, one of one of the Rachowskis did Speed Racer, possibly both of them. I remember that. Why can't I, I find it? It was think... 2008, Emil Hirsch, Christina Ricci. I remember I loved Dan Aykroyd in that movie so much. And it's got to disqualify from this one because it's got a 60% audience score. So I'm not alone on that one. That's actually a, a beloved movie. So that one does not count. Moving on. <laughs> I've got one that is a lot higher on my list of movies that I've watched a lot um, that I very, very much enjoy. And I never really like, I feel like it rubs people. People are kind of like, eh, yeah, yeah, it was all right. Um, 2009, Chris Evans, Push. Didn't see it. The movie Push. <laughs> Like, I don't know what it is about the movie. I love the world. I wish they did more movies so you could see, like, all these powers with all these people getting people interacting with it more. I wanted to see where the story would go next at the end of it. Like, I like the twists in the story. I very much enjoyed that movie. And it's one that it's it's kind of like one of those ones we talked about earlier. If it's on TV, it doesn't really matter what part of the movie it's on. If I see it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to watch this. Have you looked that one up yet? Because I just yes. did. Uh, yeah, it's, it does have a 23% rating. You're supposed is, to be guessing. I have I haven't seen the movie. I have no reference to guess it. Yeah, but I told I told you that one. I, I, I'm I, not like if I if I don't even have a chance, I'm not gonna bother. But uh that one I, I'll say I don't know uh if this is even remotely close, but the vibes I got and I just rewatched recently, the movie with Justin Timberlake out of time. I really like that movie a that lot. That was a decent and, movie, yeah. And, and same thing, I think like, it did not get like great reviews. I, f- I feel like it probably got a higher review than push, but I'm not sure. Let's see. Out of time. I'm not even seeing it. Oh, maybe it's like Oops. out of like, oh, you. Yeah, what did you type? <laughs> I-, I typed out out of time and it did not pull. Oh, yeah. It's so bad that they don't even want us to look at it. Is is that am I like thinking of a different movie? I don't know. <laughs> no, I thought that's what it was called, but I'm sure it's something else. We'll be able to figure it out. Um, well, either way, that one wasn't even originally part of my list, so it's fine. Yeah. What else you got? I have, let's see here. I don't know if this one was critically panned, but it's something I've watched numerous times. I think I even might have bought it for you on Christmas, and we might both own it. And it's Let's Be Cops. I like Let's Be Cops. That was that was a fun movie. Um, I don't think you bought that one for me, unless uh, maybe it's in our voodoo. Uh, oh my gosh this score just yeah this movie definitely qualifies really it's that bad huh because i i remember liking it okay if it definitely qualifies with your i'm talking about tomato score wise sure sure i'm gonna say 19 percent. you're off by one it was 18 percent on the tomato meter man i'm I'm getting pretty close a couple times on these what did you think the audience score was on this one uh higher 30 Uh, not higher no, it is. I'm just throwing uh, okay. it. Okay, uh, 32%. <laughs> oh, that's a, this, such a big discrepancy. Yeah. That, that bothers me. Well, but that shows you that like not everybody agrees with critics all the time, man. Oh, like, 100%. Critics are often very dumb. This I actually really good... like Kevin Smith Like, no longer lets critics go and view his uh, movies up front just because he's like, dude, I've done that my whole career and all you guys do is shit on me and not pay for a ticket. So uh, if you want to review my <laughs> film, buy a ticket and go see it with everybody else. At least I'll make like a little it. more money off of it. Like yeah. It. <laughs> and like, and Kevin Smith has like a beloved audience of like enjoys his movies, but most of his films get really bad reviews. That's very true. Yeah. But no, man, let's be cops is just like such an enjoyable movie. It's something I don't have to have my brain all the way on to sit down and watch. And it makes me laugh. And, you know, Jake Johnson learning how to do some flipping around before he becomes Spider-Man and into the Spider-Verse, you know, 
very so reasonable. Good. All right, for the sake of speeding it up a little bit, and we can we can pick and choose if we want to look at the tomato ratings for these. I'm going to do all of my sequels that I have on the list, and there's a lot of part part threes. I already mentioned Scream Three, Staying in the Horror Department, Jaws Three is an <laughs> arguably the most enjoyable Jaws movie. Jaws hands down the better Jaws movie, but Jaws Three, they're in the Sea World. That's fun. I, I enjoy the hell out of it. Uh, Karate Kid 3, which we just talked about quite a bit on this podcast when we covered Cobra Kai season four a couple weeks ago. But that movie, critically, even Daniel LaRusso hates that movie, but I still enjoy it. But people are starting well. to turn around on it ever since season five or season four of Cobra Kai. That's fair. I also have uh, I The Mighty know. Ducks Part 3, or D3, if you will. Uh, again, exist. I watch that movie every time I watch the first two. I watch the third one with it. Is it a worst version of the first two films kind of combined into one absolutely but is it still every bit of that quack quack enjoyment you want to see all day every day uh and then these are not these are not part threes but i put rocky five on the list which i think you're going to back me up on i i'm pretty sure when they train this kid to like street fight it's pretty wild <laughs> uh and then i mentioned it earlier but freddy's dead the final nightmare or nightmare on elm street part six if you will uh, another one that everybody hates the 3d uh, sequence is like notoriously awful and the ending is just wacky and silly and i love all of it all right i can i can go along with the sequel train uh, i put two movies together on my list i put clash of the titans and wrath of the titans the sam worthington movies that came out in like the 2010s i think i was combining that and the john uh whatever one you said earlier john carter yeah again dude didn't see these you have a lot of movies that i have not seen on your list and for somebody who loves movies i mean but that's okay like wrath of the titans clash of the titans kind of has the greek mythology thing going on a little bit which is why it's in my wheelhouse didn't it somewhat follow uh the odyssey somewhat yeah yeah somewhat does and i actually um, do like the odyssey so that's so I'm, I'm surprised i haven't gone around to watch this it also follows you know the old movie that it's based on um as well but you know uh Fair. wrath of the Ti the clash of the titans no rotten tomato score on that for the tomato meter but i know people didn't necessarily love it but it, it's again one of those just enjoyable turn your mind mm -hmm. off action movies the sequel wrath of the titans where they had to recast olivia wilde's character <laughs> even uh 26 on tomato meters and to go along with these, there's one other movie that came out more recently that was much more shattered on than either of those movies. And again, kind of a mythology type thing. Gods of Egypt. Gods of Egypt, which I actually own. And it's got, um, oh my gosh, Jamie Lannister from Game of Thrones is the main character. This one was very much hated. Um, maybe for similar reasons of Prince of Persia on you know certain people being cast in certain roles sure, sure. this one the audience score was a 37 but on rotten tomatoes because i know you haven't seen this one uh the rotten tomato score 15 percent actually I, I would like you to take a stab on what you think the uh what you think the jaws 3 rating was does not have a tomato meter but it has an audience score Ooh, an audience score um we used 23 earlier let's use 17 now it's 17 that's exactly <laughs> what it is nicely done that's I was exactly like, why is he is. pointing this out there's there's a there's a key here and for Freddy, freddy's dead has a 22 percent uh rating which again uh that one uh, even freddy fans struggle with that one a little bit but uh, I would argue that the Roseanne and Tom Arnold cameo alone makes that film worth watching. <laughs> did you ever see the Monster Hunter movie that came out last year? I did not. <laughs> we should have prepped better for this one. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to know if you've seen it. I want to see it, how it was received here, according to Tomato Ness. Oh, dang. Okay. So Monster Hunter, I guess, probably wouldn't qualify. I got a 45 on the tomato meter. The fan meter, 70%. I very oh, much damn. enjoyed it. Yeah. I very much enjoyed it. It like had a little bit to do with the video games, but a lot of it's about the, the people in it. So um, I hate it when movies based on games do that. Like, no, let's go with what the game's about. But it honestly worked okay in these movies, or in this movie, excuse me. So yeah, you should check that one out, man. I can let you borrow it. 
I would be interested in that one. And I, I actually, it is a game that I eventually wouldn't mind trying as well. I know we've talked about it, but that's a different podcast. <laughs> uh, loosely connected to Scream 3. I've got two Jamie Kennedy movies on here that oh, I know no. often brings up a divide in the fandom. Uh, I have both Malibu's Most Wanted, which I don't know is going to qualify. I think a lot of people love that movie. But I also love kicking it old school. And I of do course. feel like that one's going to qualify for this. List. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to look it up because I, I don't know. But what would you say Malibu's Most Wanted uh, has? And then what would you say kicking it old school has? Malibu's Most Wanted was a it was a um, well-received, at least with the audience score. Uh, and that came out in 2003. 37% on the tomato meter. For Malibu's most wanted on yeah. the tomatoes, I think you're actually really close. I just it just went away on me, unfortunately. And I'm showing Miles how it's done because I've never actually seen that movie. Oh wow! Or if no, wait, you know wait, what? maybe wait. I have. Maybe I was I have. gonna say I'm almost. Pos- I I used to watch it all the time when we lived together. So I'm pretty I sure you didn't pay attention it. to it. That's fair. Uh, King Kong ain't got nothing on me. Um, all right, what did you guess for tomato meter? Thirty-seven. Thirty-one. Audience score Damn. would disqualify it. I'll give you that. I'll give you that hint. That's okay. That's kind of one of the one of the things about that. So we'll say uh, 54%. It's exactly 54%. Oh, yeah. Wow. Nicely done. Now, kicking it old school. This is four <laughs> years later. Uh, Jamie Kennedy has... Oh, boy. <laughs> this, this is going to be a fun one. Uh, it is also a huge discrepancy between the tomato meter and the audience score, but neither of them would qualify uh, to make this a well-liked movie. This is where Jamie Kennedy is like a break dancer in the eighties. He gets like in a, I think he's in a coma. I want to say, I, think, maybe. I believe so. I believe. And so. then he wakes up and he's trying to like get his old school dance crew together to compete with all these new guys. I think there's a cameo by the Jabba walkies in that too, which is dope. I think, yeah, I think you're right. I'm going to say the tomato meter on this one is a 19%. Try again, way lower. Oh shoot. <laughs> like 8%. Try again, lower three, <laughs> 2%. Wow. This has that a 2% the... tomato meter. How the hell does that happen? That's impressively bad. <laughs> <laughs> the audience score on this one is 42% though. So again, uh, more people got like a, this got a than, the, ways back than the critics gave it credit for. Um, there's one I want to bring up that I know we have not mentioned yet. Okay. And it's one of the, we mentioned it when we talked in, on my way to work yesterday and I can't believe we've forgotten to bring it up. Jingle all the way, man. Oh, yeah. That's that Jingle one, all the way. That one's going to have to. I, I'm guessing this is going to be the widest. This Kicking It Old School had a 40% difference between tomato meter and audience score. I think that's the biggest one yet. Uh, I predict Jingle All the Way will have a wider discrepancy in its audience score versus its tomato. I think the tomato meter on this one is going to be like 7%. And the uh, audience score is going to be like 67%. All right. Are you ready, Miles? Yeah, let's reveal it. The tomato meter for Jingle All the Way, 20%. That's, wow. higher. I said seven, so that's higher yeah. than I thought it would be. I'm still the going audience, with 67 for audience. The audience score, 38. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, are we that unique? People yeah. don't like that movie? I guess they're not. That's not their favorite customer. I don't know. You but know what? That movie is uh, this, amazing. This might be a situation that it's because we both worked in retail and we know how much of a nightmare working in retail is, especially at the holidays. And like, but I saw this movie before I was a retail worker and I still enjoyed it as a kid. Damn it. That's a good argument. And I also did that too. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I, it in theaters. Maybe that's the, re- I saw it in theaters as well. I actually saw it with my mom, uh, like when I was like a kid, but, uh, uh i i enjoyed this movie as a kid and i still enjoy this movie as an adult and i definitely i even get asked like they're like how can you enjoy this movie uh because it basically represents everything wrong with capitalism and i'm like yeah it's like a dystopian nightmare film it's fantastic it's basically (laughs) like an it's it's like a a loosely related to um total recall style movie it it even has uh (laughs) arnold schwarzenegger in the same universe He never got out. Um, <laughs> okay. I've got two more movies on my list um, that I'd like to bring up for now. And okay. one, I, I know we've talked about this movie numerous times in the past. Mike and Dave need wedding dates. 
you uh you brought that one up when we when we were pitching this idea and i remember i saw that movie once and i did enjoy it i i don't know it's one that i'm like not sure why i haven't watched it again possibly just because it's not easy access or just never popped up in my you know netflix queue or what the hell ever uh i I do remember really liking the movie it's really dumb they're in hawaii right like the whole point is they have to like take these girls they don't know uh so that they can they're trying to be responsible yeah they're trying to be responsible and have like nice people to bring to the wedding basically and i the humor shouldn't work but there's just something about it that that hits the right buttons for me and i know there's one scene i i think it's with anna kendrick and zach efron where they're talking about life and they're they're not sounding smart at all but the way that efron talks about his life and like the way things make him feel it it reminds me honestly of accepted with the college scene with Justin oh, Long, that's a great everything, movie. I, but it, it's just, it's not visually it's, it's verbal the way he talks mm-hmm. about it and the way, and I was like, Oh man, I didn't expect this to, to touch me like that. Right. Real quick. Well, you, so, that's a really great cast too. Cause you already said Zach Ephraim. It's one of the guys from workaholics. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Adam Anna, Devine, I think. Yeah. Uh, Adam Devine, Devine or Devine, whatever his name whatever is. His and name then is. Anna Kendrick, who's amazing. Like just one of the funniest people on the planet. Uh, and then it was Aubrey April Plaza. Aubrey, Aubrey Plaza from uh, from Parks and Rec. So, yeah, those those four had great Zach Ephraim's one that I think he gets made fun of a lot as being like, a, I don't know, lame actor or whatever from High School Musical. Maybe people of our age, that's the case. But I, I do remember there was like a stigma to him when I was younger. But I see him in so many films where I'm like, he's a really good actor. I like him a lot. And he's funny. And you should learn his last name, Miles. It's Ephron. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say yeah. it wrong? Ephraim. I think you said Ephraim. Uh, you're going to offend all the female audiences, and apparently me. Oh yeah, we reason. have a lot of those. So um, that's, that's definitely well, think true. Well, of, think of Neighbors, man. Like I, I enjoy both of those movies, mm-hmm. where he's in the frat house next door to uh, Seth Rogen. Yeah, hundred percent. Those are and, I, I enjoyed oh both thing. of those as well. I think oh gosh, the second one is actually a sorority, though. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I was just trying to put the name of the movie out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you think the Rotten Tomato score was on that one? Make Mike and Dave need wedding guess. Um, I'm guessing again, very different uh, audience score versus tomato score. Tomato score is lower. I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, tomato score thirty five. Close. It was a thirty eight. Okay, that's so not, not bad. quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. And then tell me this: Did it would it qualify for this list still based on the audience score? So is it under fifty? No. Okay, then I'm gonna say fifty nine percent. 51%. Oh, Jess snuck yeah. over the line, dude. That's pretty dope. That's pretty But dope. that backs up what we're saying, so I like that. <clears throat> How many movies did you say you had left on your list? There's one movie I have left. And you want to save that one for last? Sure. Well, obviously, I don't, I don't know if it's you, list, but yeah. I don't uh, even know if anybody's going to know the movie, but I remember when it came out. I know you'll know it. I'll burn through a few of these then. Uh, Again, I uh, recently uh, talked about this on on Camp Slash Horrorcast. Uh, One of my absolute favorite movies of all time, Evil Bong. Uh, Everybody I talk to hates this movie. Uh, Though, I will say this. I found my people, Richie, because when I took this movie on Camp Slash Horrorcast, we always, uh, at the end, we say, would we recommend this movie? Uh, and not only did this movie get five out of six recommendations with only one person calling it garbage, one person even said that this movie is underrated and should be put on the stoner comedy uh, Mount Rushmore. So I, I, it warms my heart. Let's just say that if you haven't seen Evil Bong, eat a bag of mushrooms and go watch it. You'll you'll have the time of your life. Um, and what's the name of this other podcast again? <laughs> Camp slash Horrorcast. Yes. That's right. Nobody knows what it is because nobody cares about everybody's opinion about Evil Bong. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> uh, hey, we actually, dude, it's, a, it's a fun time. I like talking horror. Uh, we just did uh, Pumpkinhead uh, this week. Uh, Ooh, Monday, nice. We're doing uh, Ouija Origin of Evil. Uh, we're going to go into a Dracula series next month. We'll review like four different versions of Dracula going all the way back to 1931. And then up loving to- it. Uh, dead, dead and loving. I pitched dead and loving it. I said that we should absolutely, <laughs> if we're going to do, if we're going to do Dracula, we should definitely include that in our list. I hope that, hope that we go that route. <laughs> um, anyway, I said all that to say, watch evil bong. Um, <laughs> the Phantom Menace is a movie that I'm going to say. Oh. I, I enjoy watching that movie, dude. I know it sucks. I know that it's, it's like, got the best fight scene in all of star Wars history. 
it's got one of the best villains in all of uh, Star Wars history. It's a shame that they killed him off in like the first movie at the end, but that fight is dope. You can really feel it every time. I, what is it? Obi-Wan, it keeps getting stuck at those doors that keep yeah, locking oh God, and just yeah, watching qui Gon Jinn. Um, the pod racing sequence made one of the best N64 games there was. <laughs> fight me. Um, <laughs> like, that tomato sc score is low too on that game. Uh, oh, the the rating for that game. I'm, just I'm sure. I'm sure it was. Uh, it probably. Was I, so I think I had it, but uh, I, I haven't tried to play it in years. I used to legitimately love playing it. The same with the other <laughs> Star Wars game on 64. Uh, but yeah, the Phantom Menace is a movie that Star Wars. That's a perfect example of when like a fan base like whines and doesn't get their way, so they just trash a movie. Uh, because that movie's not great in terms of the star wars universe but it's very enjoyable and just like a fun it's like the aqua people versus like some forest aliens and i'm so down for that i don't know why you said they killed off one of the most badass super villains or bad guys i forgot he wasn't really dead but he was dead to me because i didn't watch uh i didn't watch that cartoon show no, 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 because Jar Jar Binks is the Sith Lord. So, like, he I die. love that theory, dude. Uh, <laughs> seriously, if you haven't seen that, there is a theory that, uh, and I, I believe, I 100% believe this is true, and that George <laughs> Lucas, I'm not even kidding. I think that George <laughs> Lucas pushed out on this idea because he's like, oh, I got to sell toys. I need that money. But <laughs> there is so much evidence to suggest that Jar Jar Binks was a, originally a Sith spy. Uh, and like he was just basically last minute change so that he would be like a, a kid friendly toy selling uh, piece of uh. character. But like there's so much evidence to support the idea that he was actually a Sith Lord and he was just like intentionally trying to bumble up. Uh, the rebellions like plans to take down you know the Siths or whatever <laughs> long story short uh, Star Wars episode one according to Rotten Tomatoes does not qualify for this list because it's got a 52% tomato score oh, wow. and a 59% audience score I expected that to be much lower frankly so uh, I guess that one doesn't count what's uh what's the second movie in the new trilogy oh my gosh Oh, I hate that one. That's my least favorite Star Wars by far Rise of Skywalker's the last one I Star Wars still eight I still haven't seen it yet. Um, but the last Jedi, the last Jedi, what's the last Jedi got? No fucking way. Oh, is this it? is disgusting. This is the biggest discrepancy between the tomato score <laughs> and the audience score. And the tomato score is, is more than double the audience score. What? Yeah. What is it? Take a guess. The tomato score is going to be a 71 higher. No way. Way higher. 84 higher 88 90 fucking one what? this this website is officially broken that movie is hot garbage what? uh the audience score is 42 percent wow i've yeah. lost faith in humanity yeah i've lost faith in humanity or this website i'm not sure which maybe both honestly bart's gonna uh, replay our, our video <laughs> and be like this is the moment that civilization had its heart ripped out uh, okay, I've got a whole list of arguably bad comedies that you, you may or may not qualify them. Uh, Soul Plane, only DVD that would work on our PlayStation for a while, <laughs> so we watched it a lot. Uh, Ready to Rumble. Uh, it's, it's, oh, a, God. it's a movie that absolutely shits on wrestling fans, but I still enjoy it a lot, and David Arquette is amazing. Um, the Pest is another one that I think I just saw at the right age. That, like I find that one endearing, even though I do admit that he is very obnoxious at this point. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then the rocker, which, uh, wow. Okay. I really like it's Dwight from the office, uh, whatever his human name is. Uh, he's <laughs> like Dwight. an old, <laughs> he's an old drummer from like this huge mega rock band that gets like kicked out of the band and then joins up with like his nephew's band in the garage and they become like this big sensation. I actually watched that movie when I was sick, like a few weeks ago, I was just like on like a binge watching, like feel good movies type of thing. And, uh, and that movie I rewatched and absolutely loved it again. And the soundtrack slaps. It's like they're made up bullshit songs that they make up in their garage. I like it a lot. Fair enough. And then again, not sure if this one will qualify, but Hot Tub Time Machine is another movie that I absolutely love to death. Fantastic comedic cast. Uh, I feel like that one could qualify. Premise. 
Stupid I absolutely like that one. I haven't looked up any of these, so I'd be I'd be curious to see which one of those do you think would be the worst that I, I just said? Probably rocker. You think the rocker will have the lowest? Hot tub time machine should be lower, but I, I feel like for some reason rocker speaking to me. Hot hot tub time machine has a 63 tomato and a 56 audience. The Rocker, which had Rain Wilson as his name, and Christina Applegate, who I love. Rocker's lower at a 41% tomato and audience at 46. So that's the closest those two have been to each other. That's that's yeah. that's saying something, right? Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> what else did I have on that? No- oh, Soul Plane. I actually think Soul Plane is a good movie. So I, I'm going to say Soul yeah. Plane gets a high rating. And I'm, I, I think it's like that's one that almost qualifies. Like we talked about that doesn't qualify for our list today. Of like it can be so bad it's uh, good, but actually, Soul Plane has no tomato review and it has an audience score of fifty one percent. So it just I feel barely, like people enjoy that movie for what it is. By. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Then you said the pest was the last one. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, the pet the pest is gonna have a low rating. I, and this <laughs> one is gonna be like wow. Uh, there, I'm pretty sure our listeners like are worried that if I'm left on suicide or left, left unsupervised, I might like choke on my crayons or something. Oh, <laughs> oh. Uh, well, we had a 2% earlier, so it's not bad. But actually, this is the biggest discrepancy in uh, <laughs> audience score, even bigger than the Phantom Minutes. Tomato score is 8%. What do you think the audience score is? Uh, 49. Higher. 56. 68. Damn. Yeah, honestly, that one, Damn. Uh, that makes me feel less stupid than I thought I was. So that's there you go, cool. man. Yeah. Oh, America's just as dumb as you. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because it's true. It's funny because it's accurate. I'm oh. getting real close to with my list, and I know you only have one. Uh, another Halloween favorite of mine that is going to have a terrible, terrible score. It's not a horror movie, it's a comedy. Uh, it's the only PG 13 rated Nickelodeon film ever made. It's called Fun Size. I watch it every Halloween. Oh, yeah. That's a cute movie. I enjoy the hell out of it, honestly. It's got a little Spider-Man in it. It does have little Spidey. And uh, the dude from uh, Silicon Valley. Why wasn't he Valley. in No Way Home? <laughs> that would have been a great cameo. Uh, the <laughs> dude from uh, from Silicon Valley, who I'm blanking on his name. Uh, Thomas Middleditch or whatever. Yeah, he, he plays like the convenience store clerk that like That's helps right. Spidey out. Yeah. And they have like a little adventure. And actually, uh, who it's Johnny Knoxville is like the bully, I think. Like, yeah, the, that like the boyfriend bully or whatever. Uh, that one, uh, Rich, it has a 25% tomato score. What do you think its audience score is? It would qualify for our list here today. Uh, 44. Close, 47. All right. All right. All right, Good last you, one that I'll do, and then we'll 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 end with yours. Uh, let me go through and make sure I didn't miss anything. I also had Rocky Five on here, but I kind of casually we, mentioned we talked it earlier. about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, the last one I have on my list, I absolutely adore this movie, even though I recognize that it is very very flawed. And honestly, uh, learning about the behind the scenes uh, of this movie. Uh, makes it also enjoyable. The Super Mario Brothers from 1993. Ooh, yeah. I feel like at least a lot of people our age actually say that they enjoyed the movie for what it was, um, even though it was not the Super Mario that we were hoping it would be going into or it. Or any Super Mario that we'd ever received before. Yeah. I'm going to say this is going to be a super tough one. Oh, let, me give gonna... you a, let me give you a quick hint. Okay. The tomato score and the audience score are one percent away from each other. Twenty-seven and twenty-eight. Oh my god, dude! Twenty-eight and twenty-nine. Is oh, the I almost answer. said that. You were Damn. almost there, dude. Damn. I you almost, were almost said that. there. Oh, wow, that changed impressive. my mind last second. But yeah, there, there's a lot to love about that. I mean, like if you look at the actors, if you just look at it's Bob Hoskins, uh, Leguizamo, I can't the past. Yeah, yeah, actually. <laughs> uh, Anthony Hop is it Anthony Hop? No, who's the no. uh Dennis Hopper? Dennis yeah. Hopper is Koopa. Yeah. Like it's a star-studded cast. Like those are some heavy hitters. Uh and and Dennis Hopper in that movie, like it it there's a lot of behind the scenes story now where like him and John Leguizamo are essentially just hammered drunk the entire movie because they are so sick and tired of the directors. 
Uh, there's actually a scene where John Leguizamo is wearing a, a cast on his hand because he literally got like messed or I'm sorry, Bob Hoskins is wearing the cast. It's because John Leguizamo is drunk as fuck and he had to drive a van and he accidentally like basically uh, hit the brake in a way that it made it the door slam on Bob Hoskins hands. And Dennis oh, Hoppers is being evil Koopa, like talking about like, you know, de-evolution while he's hammered on whiskey that him and John Leguizamo are, are like taking <laughs> shots of between takes. Oh. Oh uh, I, I love the movie. It's so I saw it when I was a kid and I think I was young enough that I'm like, I don't give a shit. It's got Mario on it. I'm showing my tattoo, even though you can't actually see it in the light. <laughs> uh, it has Mario in this movie. I don't care that it's not the Mario I'm used to. I'm still down for it. Well, just keep that open mind when Chris Pratt does his voice in the upcoming movie. Oh, not excited about that at all. <laughs> Maybe it'll catch us off guard. All right, sir. What is uh, <laughs> what is your final movie? Again, I don't know if this one was seen enough to constitute this, but it is a movie I absolutely enjoy. It's got Guy Pierce in it, and I always call it Die Hard in Space. And I'm pretty sure you've seen it too. It's the movie Lockout. Die Hard in Space. That's a very, very good, uh, very good <laughs> description of that film. So for those that haven't seen it, the there's a prison on the moon. And the president's daughter goes up there because she's doing re rehabilitation work. And of course, while she's there, prisoners escape. They get some of them get de-iced and the, all these serial killers get out and they take over the prison. And it all and happens on Christmas Day. <laughs> <laughs> Without Christmas music for some reason. But Guy Pierce is sent in basically to go retrieve the president's daughter. But he has other reasons that he wants to go up there. So it's really stupid dialogue fantastic action lots of people getting shot things that don't make sense um both of the scores on this one qualify it for this list uh they're not far off but they're definitely not close uh, not, not far off but definitely not close uh, i'm assuming this is gonna be another one where the audience is higher than the tomato yes you, you did see this movie right I did. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't remember loving it. I remember thinking it was like, oh, I think I'd rather watch Die Hard or, <laughs> or Alien. It's definitely uh, or a Alien 3 because Alien 3 go. is the one where it's like a prison uh, colony <laughs> escape. But uh, that one's all, that's also another movie I could have put on this list. Oh, a lot uh, of um, let's say that the tomato meter on this one is 31 percent. 37. OK, so close. not too bad. Uh, and then I'll say 44%. No, no. You said they're a little bit farther apart. 49. Well, you're, you're on the right track. Okay. 47% for, uh, what? for the, what? uh, audience score. <laughs> Every time you stopped with that, it, uh, the audience score was 46. Okay. I was right there in between. So you were 40. close. Yeah. You were close. Yeah. But yeah that's, there's that's something about that movie. It's a definitely a definite guilty pleasure movie for me. Guilty pleasure is a good a good word for a lot of the movies on on this list in general. Yeah. Uh, and then I think like you kind of touched on it earlier, but that's also another one of the beautiful things about movies. Like I don't want to get too like hippy dippy here or whatever, but like movies are we, we talked about how it's like if you didn't see the movie at the time that it came out, you're probably going to miss things. And it's kind of weird that you might be bombing a score on a movie that you were born in, say, 2003 and a movie you're reviewing was like in 1995 or whatever. Like, that's that's weird. There's, there's a weird factor that. But ultimately, a lot of times I think movies are meaningful to us more so because of like where we were when we watched them uh like you know the memories that are invoked because of the films i know that for you uh both you and i have seen a lot of movies together in theaters and more before that you and your dad have seen so many movies in theaters and i know that that you know definitely affects your your memories and the impact that they had on you and same for me i remember a lot of the films i saw with both my parents and friends like mario brothers i remember distinctly we rented it from a blockbuster uh, sometime in the nineties, I had a sleepover. I lived in Topeka, Kansas at that time, had a sleepover with a bunch of friends hanging out in the basement. And, you know, we had candy and popcorn and Cokes and the super Mario brothers. And we all fucking loved it because we were eight and didn't know any better. And it's still Yoshi cool to cool. watch that movie and be like, Oh yeah, this is that movie I saw when I was like eight and kind of dumb, but like had a real good time with it. And we played glow in the dark football, like afterwards, yeah. stuff like that, you know? <laughs> Well, and it's just with most of the movies and the internet, I'm I'm concerned with how people 
look at the past and review it. And I was going to point out, like, what if people, you know, around their 20s right now go back and review like Blazing Saddles today? What's going to happen? Like it's <laughs> that movie can't be made. I'm going to tell you it's not going to go well. Rich. Yeah. <laughs> but to be fair, I just looked up the Rotten Tomato score on Blazing Saddles. No tomato meter. The audience score. Do you want to guess what the audience score is? 87. 91. Oh, so wow. maybe maybe that throws what our fears out the window there. Maybe th- there's enough of people on both sides where it kind of evens out. Well, you and I are older millennials, so we are both born somewhere between like memes and meh. And a lot of people have uh, have that opinion on on movies that they're just kind of out of touch with, I guess you could say. And that movie is out of touch. It could yeah, not be made absolutely. today. Uh, but that does not take away from the comedic genius that it is and was. Uh, and again, I've said it already, and I know this is a divisive term, but I, I do genuinely believe in things being a product of their time. Uh, and a lot of people like to take a 2022 lens to judge something that was made in the 1960s. And that just isn't fair. And does that mean that that was correct or right? No, absolutely not. Life was really shitty for a lot of people. And the further we go back, the more that's true for more specific marginalized groups. But again, entertainers at that time aren't bad people because they were bringing light to these things. And if people want to take that kind of lens to it, there's a lot of people in our modern times that are having really shitty lives still. So, you know, a hundred percent. Yeah. 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 100%. Put that lens right back in your own face too. Yeah. Most of us, but yeah, uh, dude, this was fun. I had a lot of fun doing this. Yeah. This was really cool. Uh, I also would love to hear if anybody listening to this has bad movies that they want to defend. And uh, you can, you can hit us up with those on Twitter. Uh, you can follow Richie at the Wiz underscore kid 23. And you can follow me online at Mr. Most Days Off. That's pretty much everywhere. You can follow our show at Best Darn Diddly. Not everything. Best Darn Diddly. That's D I D D L Y. Guys, we have an incredible episode coming up next. Uh, both, uh, it's a it's a best darn diddly episode. We're going to be reviewing the episode Homer, uh, where we find out the reason Homer is so stupid is because he has a crayon lodged in his brain. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and say it because I'm so excited, guys. We're going to have Al Jean, the current Woo! and longest running showrunner for The Simpsons, is going to be on the show to discuss that with us. Uh, very excited to bring that to you. That's going to be our next episode. I'm going to ask him how come it was the crayon and not the Simpsons gene that ruined Homer's brain. (laughs) Good question, actually. (laughs) But that will do it, guys. Uh, Make sure you come back for our episode next week. And until next time, be cromulent to each other. 